Hi, welcome to the first Culture Mavens of 5781. <laughs> I'm Tom Tyholtz, and I'm here with Rabbi Susan Nannan. Hi, Tom. Hi, everyone. Nice to be with you again. Now, I know that there's a play that you want to start us off with that's going to be at the uh, Wallace, right? Right. Now, if only it were live, I literally live about half a mile from the Wallace. I could almost walk there. But this is going to be um, online, of course, and it's a new play called Wiesenthal about Simon Wiesenthal, the uh, Nazi hunter and for whom the Wiesenthal Center is named. And it's a one man show written and starring Tom Dugan. And there are only eight performances from October 20th to the 27th. It's probably going to be fantastic. And I'm definitely going to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it, too. You know, um, I actually uh, knew Wiesenthal. My father was born in the, lived in the same city as Wiesenthal, Lvov or Lemberg as it was called before the war. And then after the war in Vienna, when my father was running a um, charity organization for the uh, refugees and the concentration camp survivors, they reconnected. And so uh, growing up, Wiesenthal came to our home. Wow. And the, and the thing that we shared, which was really sweet, was that as a child, I was a stamp collector. So he used to bring me stamps and send me things. And so I'm going to be very interested to see how Wiesenthal is portrayed in this one-man show. Did you know he was a Nazi hunter? Of time? course. No, no, of course. Of Did course. your father want to join him? My father wanted always said, I wish I could have gone and done that with Wiesenthal. That was a fantasy of his. Well, well, my, my father worked with him insofar as one of the ways in which they put together their cases and found the criminals was that they had to interview these survivors. And yeah. the, my father was running a place where there were thousands upon thousands of Holocaust survivors. That was a place where Wiesenthal and also Tuvia Friedman, uh, who was also a Nazi hunter, basically had offices. Well, that explains your interest in Demyanyuk and why you wrote that book. I have a little insight into you now. It's kind of uh, something you grew up with. So yes, that's for sure. Interesting. Now, I know you have a play you want to recommend. Yes, it's called 45 Plays, and it's by the Neo-Futurist Theater in Chicago. Six different actresses will inhabit the 45 uh, First Ladies of the United States in a 100-minute play, uh, giving us a little take on each of them. And uh, it sounds like a lot of fun, and it's going to be up from October 13th to November 2nd. From Martha to Melania. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. great. I am very good friends with the director of the Los Angeles Jewish Film Festival, and they do some amazing screenings online all year long instead of just having a festival once a year. And starting this Sunday, October 18th, they're going to be premiering a brand new documentary called All See. This is the name of a young black basketball player who lived in Harlem who was recruited to play for the Maccabee Games. And he was taken to Israel where he became a superstar basketball player, converted to Judaism, became a citizen of Israel, and dated, I think, Miss Israel, who was an Ethiopian Jew. So it's a wonderful documentary. It sounds really interesting. So uh, I highly recommend that film. That sounds great. I want to talk about CAPS UCLA, which is the Center for the Performing Arts, sort of the successor to a UCLA Live. And it's run by Christy Edmonds, who is a wonderful genius, very respected in the cultural world. She's putting on a four-day festival called the Tune-In Festival from October 28th through October 31st. And then on November 1st, there's a special program. Each day of the program has a sort of different theme and multiple performers. Gather Up, uh, the Kronos Quartet, will be among the people performing. And then uh, November 1st is the People Speak, and that will have a number of people speaking, including Marissa Tomei. So I think that's going to be a really exciting thing to check out. That sounds really interesting that you reminded me, you mentioned the Kronos Quartet, that the Israel Philharmonic, their um, chamber orchestra is still doing live concerts every single Sunday. And this Sunday, they'll be doing the Goldberg Variations. They are, you know, fantastic. It's from live from Israel. 
So if people love classical music, they have an opportunity to hear that among other things. And I think you had a, a photography exhibit you wanted to mention? Oh, yes. I, <laughs> Ed Roche is one of LA's iconic artists. And in the mid-1960s, he took a pickup truck and installed a camera on it and basically drove the entire length of Sunset Boulevard photographing all the storefronts. And it's the kind of obsessive art project that, you know, you and I do it and it seems crazy and a great artist does it and it becomes something important. And throughout his career, between 1965 and 2007, Roche returned to Sunset Boulevard and continued to photograph it. And now the Getty Museum has created a website called 12 Sunsets. And they have 65,000 images, many of which have never been seen. So I think that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. I mean, well, nobody's going to see all of them, but I guess you can look at some of them. Right. But just to really have a chronicle of just how LA has changed is really great. And how some things are still there and you're still going to them. That's fantastic. Well, the last thing I want to talk about this week is political. I already voted. I don't know if you did, Tom. There are these drop boxes. I'm all early over. voting in person, but oh. I encourage everyone to vote. But this Sunday from 4 to 5 30 p.m., we're doing a joint program with the Kasdan Institute from USC called the 2020 Election in Jewish Trends. So how are Jews voting this year? And we know there's a lot of fragmentation among Jews right now. And Dan Schnur, who's a wonderful political uh, commentator, and Stephen Winmuller, who's really a political scholar. The two of them are going to be in conversation. And uh, it should be really interesting. And less than a month away, we'll know the results. <laughs> right. I guess that's the goodest place as any to end this week's uh, segment. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Have Bye. a nice Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>